Hello, my name is Natasha and today I'm going to tell you about medicine and meals at St Bartholomew's Hospital in Rochester. Now I have had some help with this through the blog Medieval Monk which has been written by Dr Christopher Monk and I'm very thankful for his help unbeknowingly to him actually because this has really helped me to be able to look at what medicines were being used in the medieval times by St Bartholomew's Hospital and also St Andrew's Prior now known as Rochester Cathedral. He's done some incredible work with the cathedral to be able to look at their custom books over time and see what types of items were being used in everyday life. The customs books do exactly record that. The goings and the comings of money and items that were being traded as well as quite interestingly some recipes for medicines which is really exciting. So one of the recipes that I wanted to show you from the custom book and the custom book is actually called Customal Rofen. I'm going to presume that the S is silent. I don't know for sure. I'm sure that Christopher can let me know. <laughs> well, he's probably very busy. Um, but uh, this book um, has the recipe that is for ulceration in exposed skin tissue. Now, since the original St Bartholomew's Hospital was for leprosy, I felt that this was quite appropriate. And I can imagine this actually being a recipe that may have been used in the hospital for the skin condition because often being able to distinguish whether something was leprosy or some other skin condition would be quite difficult and so either way they'd probably treat it with the same type of procedure um, and with this um, it's quite interesting to see that initially they say that the skin the, should be rubbed with laurel oil which would often be made from bay leaves so that is a form of a laurel plant and so that would be like an antiseptic ointment that would go on but interestingly this recipe actually gives the description of something that would be drunk so it says here to take tapsus barbastus which the french call million and the tops of the bramble, namely blackberries, and wild tansy and comfrey and knotgrass. These herbs are best decotted in a barley malt liquor. The patient should drink this in the morning and evening, assuredly. But first the patient should rub the painful spot with laurel oil, as I just said. So um, barley malt liquor would be very similar to like a Guinness. And at the time the priory would actually employ brewers to make ale and these types of drinks so it was something that they would have easy access to and it'd be a form of making like a tincture or infusion um not like your gin and tonics mind you it doesn't sound quite as nice as that but still i don't think this would taste terrible at all actually so let's have a look at some of these plants that are being included here so um on the top left we've got comfrey which you have probably recognized that does grow wild quite a lot on the top right we definitely know what bramble leaves look like i would say they certainly grow everywhere the bottom left is actually the knot grass and the bottom right is the wild tansy what's interesting about the tansy leaves actually is that there's something in them that although it tastes very bitter it was used in the middle ages and beyond and after to be able to kill the types of worms that were apparently in fish of the day that doesn't sound very nice i didn't know about worms that were in fish that could infect you but anyway apparently they they, they would kill it they'd kill the worms and um but because it tasted quite bitter they would often mix um the leaves with eggs and milk to cover up the bitter flavor so that was quite interesting so already has a very medicinal use there and this incredible plant in the middle is the mullion and this has uh, wonderful soft uh, leaves and it's really tall actually and you do see these growing out in the wild they're quite noticeable i've definitely seen them come up at fort amherst which is really interesting and this plant has a few different uh, chemicals in it actually that um uh, is quite interesting so it has sap saponins um in it which is essentially where we got the name of soap from so therefore we know it can be almost like a cleanser and probably an astrogen and then it also has something in it called acubins um, which is very good at very good for wounds and for healing especially for oral wounds 
So it's very interesting that this was in this concoction because this is a compound which is still considered as being medicinal to today. Um, so therefore, it kind of makes sense that it's in this recipe along with some of these other herbs that each have their own components which would be seen as medicinal. Of course, at the time, there wasn't a cure for leprosy. That was something that came much later in, in time. But, uh, you know, this uh, during the medieval times, just being able to provide good food, clean clothes and somewhere um, to be clean was really, really uh, special, really. Something that was le has led on to us having this healthcare system that we have today. And what's really interesting about that, where I said about clean clothes, is that one of the other things that was registered in the customs book was that there were people who were employed to make soap. And so they were working with lye and they were making soap and it was part of everyday practice really to, to be clean, which would definitely have aided St Bartholomew's Hospital as they would have had soap and they wouldn't have really known why they were using it because it wasn't until much later that we understood how bacteria um, actually, you know, clings to your hands and your skin. And obviously we know this very well now after we've been washing our hands so much over the last year. So it was really interesting that although we see the Middle Ages as being a really dark and dirty time, actually they had soap and they did keep quite clean and they had these wonderful kind of herbal remedies that they were using to treat ailments such as uh, skin conditions and ulcers on the skin. But it's interesting that this concoction was drunk rather than put on the skin, which I find really interesting anyway. So looking at the food which would have been eaten during the medieval times, it was very basic. We definitely didn't have Amazon delivery back then. Um, and some of the items that would have been traded would have included items such as wheat, peas, barley, oats, cheese honey and bacon so very very simple types of foods and the cheese was really only for special occasions that was seen as being something that if you were at the top of the hierarchy that you could enjoy so the amount of cheese and bacon and honey that made it to St Bartholomew's was probably not a great deal that brings us on to the special occasions in which cheese was included for St Bartholomew's which interestingly was on special occasions such as Easter. This makes sense because of Lent when you've given up dairy um, what more would you want but to gorge yourself on dairy and eat as much as you can. Uh, so yes yeah, so they actually had a cake which was called Flaco which was gifted to St Bartholomew's Hospital during Easter and this was recorded in the customs book and I'm going to show you how to make it. So this is, um, with a piece missing of course, <laughs> I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, so this is a flaco, uh, it's a type of pan kind of cake. Um, what's really interesting though is it's made in layers so you can really see where this has inspired other types of recipes worldwide including lasagna, baklava, and maybe even pizza, I'd say. And this is made up of four layers, each with the luxurious items to the medieval times anyway, a layer of cheese and honey. Okay. Oh, yeah. All the good stuff in there. Okay. So, you you know, you've starved yourself from all of these lovely things over Lent, and then you're going to eat this lovely, lovely cake. Now, what's interesting, and there is a reason that I have made it round, and that is why it traditionally was round, and I think there's a lot more here for us to understand and it connects well with medicine. These were originally called placenta cakes. Yes, that's right, placenta cakes. And that's because they the word placenta means flat and round. <laughs> and therefore, that's why this is also called a placenta cake. But in the custom book, it was called flaco. So... We're going to uh, stick with that today, but obviously what's interesting is that, there we go, there was a medicinal kind of connection there to this cake as well, which is, yeah, very interesting. It really does look like lasagna, by the way. So I'm going to show you how to make 
baking. First of all, you want to take 200 grams of plain flour and around 70 mils of warm water with half a teaspoon of salt dissolved into it. You're going to add this to the flour bit by bit until it starts to come together and form a nice firm dough. You're going to want to do it, like I say, bit by bit and you're probably going to want to get your hands in there to try and pull it together and create a really nice soft dough. Once you've done that, you need to put it to one side, cover it up and put it to one side for about an hour so that the gluten develops. Next, you want to grate 200 grams of cheese. I use cheddar cheese because cheddar cheese is great. And you're gonna put it in a warm pan and just heat it up really, really slowly while stirring it. You're gonna keep stirring it until it forms into a nice smooth paste. It'll take a little while, not too long though, and you'll get something that looks a bit like this. Hopefully something that looks even smoother than mine. Then you're gonna add three tablespoons of honey. I used some nice local honey from Fort Amherst. And then add three bay leaves and mix it all in. You're gonna need to leave this to infuse for about half an hour. So you've got time to go and make yourself a nice cup of tea now while this all does its job for you. Go back to your dough. It will be lovely and stretchy now and easy to roll out. Break it into four small round balls and then roll those out into nice round thin sheets. Lay your first one down onto some greaseproof paper and start to apply your lovely honey cheese sauce with a spatula or a knife. A spatula was definitely the easiest though. Build these up into layers as if you're making a lasagna. After all, this definitely inspired the lasagna. You can leave the bay leaves in or take them out. It's up to you. Put it into the oven at 150 Celsius for about 20 to 30 minutes and you'll end up with something that looks like this. Make sure it doesn't burn. You've got to be a little bit careful with that honey. But yum, yum, yum. So there we have it. Take it out of the oven and you should have this wonderful, wonderful flaco cake or placenta cake. Um, now, if you wanted to, on those last five minutes, you could put some of that wonderful cheese and honey uh, paste onto the top. But I only do it for the last five minutes because if you've ever made honey roasted parsnips, you'll know that the honey does burn exceedingly quickly. And you'll end up with, um, like on the edges here, you'll end up with a very burnt top. So don't do that at the beginning if you would like it on the top. Do it at the end because of the honey. It will burn very quickly. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed that and learning a little bit about medieval medicine and meals and how... Um, how that would have impacted life at St Bartholomew's. It would have been um, a really interesting place to stay and it's probably a lot different than what we imagine. However, as time went on um, into the 1500s, it did decay quite rapidly and you're going to learn a little bit more about that in future videos and content which we create. And also, um, it's really interesting, though, to see that the new hospital was built and that became really le the leading hospital for Medway. And obviously now it's going to be converted into really beautiful apartments which recognise the historical aspects of that incredible building. So stay tuned and um, watch our other videos. I hope you really enjoy them. Thank you for tuning in and watching our St Bartholomew's videos and please if you do have any stories about the hospital that you would like to share we'd really love to hear them we really want to be able to hand over information to the Medway archives and uh, we want to be able to share stories and make sure that they're recorded forever. Thank you very much.